thank you, that's great. <laughs> oh. So I'm hoping you can now hear me on the stream. We've been going straight, I've been talking to you for the last five minutes saying hello to various people who've turned up. Um, but only the people in church in the building have been able to hear me because um, I forgot to push a button which meant the sound would work, so <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> but I'm glad to hear it's working now. Excellent, good. Margie said she can hear the music. So I'm just going to take a breath and welcome you again to the stream. Um, this is the first Sunday that we're streaming from church, so I'm I'm hoping that's the only technical hitch and everything else is going to work fine. It is communion this morning, so if you'd like to get uh, bread and wine or something similar uh, to join in uh, with the communion section of the service, you're very welcome to do that. It's lovely to have Richard and Lucy here with us. Uh, the music you can hear in the background is live music. That is actually Richard playing in the church building. So that's really great. And the service itself is going to start in a couple of minutes. There we go. A few more people coming in this morning. Pardon? I can't hear Sarah. Yes, no, that's okay. That's okay. Morning, Jill. So it's lovely to have folk on the stream, it's lovely to have folk actually physically in church with us this morning. There we go. So I'm going to switch my phone off now because there's nothing more distracting leaving a service than trying to keep an eye on a live stream at the same time. There we go. Um, and we're going to have a countdown and the service is going to start in about 30 seconds. All Saints Wellington. My name is Tim Carter. I'm the vicar here at All Saints and at St. Catherine's Iton. And whether you're with us physically in the church building or on the Facebook stream, it's really good to have you with us this morning. Um, this is the first week that we're trying to stream from church with some new technology. We've already had one technical glitch that I, I'm hoping has been fixed. Um, I think it has. And um, we've got a bit of feedback there. Um, but if there are other things that come up through the service, please do bear with us. Um, a comment in the comments.
In Jesus' name, amen. There's been a lot of waiting over the last few months, and we're going to sing about how strength rises as we wait for God. upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong Father, thank you that you do strengthen us when we feel weary, that you bear us up. Amen. And this morning we're exploring this theme of um, resting in God and being born up when things are difficult. And uh, one of the most famous stories in the Bible about um, people who are grieving and finding life difficult is the story of Lazarus and his death. Uh, so we're going to watch a, a, vid a video which shows us that. Um, this, I found this on the Hillsong Kids YouTube channel. I think it's brilliant. If you've got youngsters and you want some cartoons that show them Bible stories, uh, go on YouTube and search for Hillsong Kids. They've got a whole... Was it Hillsong? No, it wasn't Hillsong. It was Saddleback. Sorry, Saddleback Kids. We've got a whole range of material. It's really good. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, sit and watch this story of Lazarus. Stories of the Bible. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. 
he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha, Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Oh, come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, I don't know. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, I don't know. But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus, but Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, it'll be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go through. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus. But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here, so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. So Caroline has sent around some activity sheets for the youngsters to explore that story, and we're going to explore it uh, in the sermon a little bit later as well. But now we have a moment when we come to God because we know that we get things wrong and we need to say sorry to each other and to God.
So, Nathaniel, could we have the confession lifted you up? Excellent. For the times when we have failed to show your love in our families, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times when we have closed our ears to the cries of your children throughout the world, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times when we have not recognised you in the faces of those who care for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, our Father, forgive you your sins and bring you to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. And as a forgiven people, we worship God in song as we prepare to remember Jesus' death for us at the table. And we sing of the living hope that we have in Jesus.
we have the communion of sweet tasting honey. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this to remember him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Father, we do this to remember him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. For those of you who are in the church building, if you would like to receive uh, the bread this morning, please stand where you are and I will bring it to you. And for those at home, if you'd like to eat and drink at home, that's great. And Lucy and Richard are going to lead us in song worship uh, while we distribute uh, the communion in church. Let us share this meal to celebrate God's faithfulness and to remember that we are all welcome at the table. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing
nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, my King, what a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a wonderful name it is, the name not hold you the veil tore before you the silence the voice of sin and grace the heavens are rocking to praise of your glory for you are raised to life again you have no What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. As we have been fed and forgiven at his table, so we go and walk in the light together. Amen. God makes peace within us. Let's claim it. God makes peace between us. Let's share it. And so we offer our, each other an appropriate sign of peace. Lots of waving in the church building. And those at home, emojis on the stream and waves and peace be with yous all. Um, this might be a time if the youngsters want to go off and start doing some of the activities that Caroline sent round. Um, she's emailed them round, so they're available there. They're on the Facebook page as well if you haven't had an email. And if you'd like an email and you hadn't had one this week, let us know and Caroline will add you to the list for future weeks. We are currently working on a plan to be able to run young people's groups again on a Sunday morning. Um, so pray for us as we do that. We're hoping by the end of the month we'll be able to have something, but the latest we'll have something on a Sunday morning uh, for the young people to be able to come and, and do. But now we're going to have our Bible readings and Sheila is going to come and read a live reading for us and then we're going to have a video reading from Rick. And as we go forward, this is the way it's going to be, mixed economy. Um, those who are comfortable coming to the building will have live those who like to send videos in, that's great. We'll use those as well. Um, 
So, Sheila, over to you for our first Bible reading. The first reading this morning is taken from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, beginning at verse 16. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone, and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's Gospel reading is taken from Luke, reading from chapter 21, starting at verse 5 and reading through to chapter 11. Glory to you, O Lord. Some of the disciples were talking about the temple how beautiful it looked with its fine stones and the gifts offered to God. Jesus said, All this you see, the time will come when not a single stone here will be left in place. Every one will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will this be? And what will happen in order to show that the time has come for it to take place? Jesus said, Be on guard. Don't be deceived. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am he, and the time has come. But don't follow them, don't be afraid when you hear of wars and revolutions. Such things must happen first, but they do not mean that the end is near. He went on to say, countries will fight each other, kingdoms will attack one another, there will be terrible earthquakes, famines and plagues everywhere. There will be strange and terrifying things coming from the sky. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you to Rick and Sheila for bringing our readings this morning. And to reflect on them, uh, let's pray. As we gather around the written word and listen to the spoken word, may we meet with the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ah, so, so this term, term has started, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Even for those of whose kids aren't at school anymore. Anyway, so we're starting this term uh, with a couple of sermons looking at big issues that have come up um, around the world over the last six months or so. Um, and this week we're going to be thinking about COVID-19, and next week uh, we're going to be looking at Black Lives Matter and the challenges of racial inequality. And I know, as I had feedback, that some of you feel that we've been uh, a bit slow to react to this, and actually uh, you would have welcomed an opportunity to reflect on these together earlier um, and I think that critique is fair um, we could have been more responsive and flexible in our plans and our, our sermon planning um, but we are where we are and uh, perhaps making a virtue out of a necessity uh, it may be that the time that has elapsed might actually give us 
a slightly different perspective on these issues that will be helpful in our exploration. So, for instance, it seems to me that we are we're moving into a different phase of this whole COVID-19 thing. Um, we're beyond the initial kind of crisis management um, and into a new long-term reality. Um, for some of us, I think we kind of hoped that uh, once the summer was out of the way and kids were back at school and college, it'd be like things would be getting back to normal. Um, and it's clear that this isn't going to happen. Um, we are now, I think, more and more facing reality that this we're in it for the long haul, um, that things are now fundamentally different. Um, and many of them are not actually going to go back to the way they were for the foreseeable future. And that's been quite, quite hard, over the, particularly over the last uh, couple of weeks. So, as we face up to this fact, what resources do we find in God's word to guide us, to sustain us? What is God showing us? What is God calling us to? How do we live as faithful disciples in this new way of life and of being? And I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't think I've got all the answers. If you were coming this morning hoping that you go away knowing exactly what was going to happen, no, not so much. But I do have some suggestions of, of some themes that have occurred to me as I've reflected on the Bible readings that we've had today. And these themes which seem to me to weave in and out of each other through these readings and actually through the whole of Scripture, uh, the themes of grief, of trust, and of focus. Of grief, of trust, and of focus. The book of Lamentations does exactly what it says on the tin. Almost all of it is made up of songs and poems of grief and lamentation. It's written uh, in the aftermath of the invasion of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, the destruction of the temple, the exile of the people of God. It expresses the grief and anger of the survivors with brutal honesty. And one of the most remarkable features of this book of Lamentations is the way in which the writer unflinchingly ascribes responsibility for the suffering of the people to God and calls God to account. At the beginning of this morning's readings, we heard this. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. We have to look back to the beginning of the chapter to discover who he is that has done these things. It says this. The writer writes, I am the one who has seen affliction by the rod of the Lord's wrath. He is the Lord. It's God that the writer says has done these things to him. The writer of Lamentations clearly sees the suffering he is living through as a result of God's action. And in the middle of our passage this morning, we read one of the few rays of light in the book. This reminder of God's great love. So here we find weaving together the permission to grieve and to be honest about our anger and confusion before God with a call to remember that God is trustworthy, that God's compassion and faithfulness do not fail, and that when our soul is downcast, we can choose to focus on God's unfailing nature and to have hope. Why did Jesus wait two days? His disciples didn't understand why. It seems like they thought he was avoiding the people who were plotting to kill him in Jerusalem. But then Jesus says, right now we're, go we're going. And it's clear that that wasn't a problem at all. That wasn't the issue. 
Mary and Martha were just left hanging. There's no text message or WhatsApp message to kind of say, oh, I'm on my way, or hold on, I'll be there in a couple of days. They, they don't know what's happening. They were just left to wait. Uh, Jesus makes a passing reference to this all working out for the glory of God. But even that is difficult to get our heads around. What's the first thing that Martha says to Jesus? If you'd been here, this wouldn't have happened. I wonder, do we hear echoes of lamentations? Somebody else in the Bible saying to God, you are responsible for this. And Jesus doesn't rebuke Martha for her presumption, but calls her deeper into faith, into belief, into trust. You see, it seems to me that this background of uncertainty, of not knowing, of not understanding, what, not really getting what's going on, that's really important here because it isn't trust if we know what's going on. It isn't trust. If there's no area of uncertainty, then it isn't trust. It's at times when we can't know or don't know that we choose to trust or not. As the story moves on, we witness Jesus grieving with the family. He weeps with them. And one of the things that many people, many of us have found difficult over the last six months is the fact that the kind of thing we read about here, families and communities getting together to grieve and mourn, hasn't been able to happen. Being robbed of the opportunity to have the funeral services that we would have wanted, of the comforting presence of friends and families at times of deep grief, has really hurt. It may be of some comfort to know that Jesus weeps with us, but it may not. This might be a loss that we have to lament, to have out with God, to lay at God's feet. But through it all, Jesus keeps calling Mary and Martha back to trust and focus, to trust him and not get distracted by the noise or all the people or the possibility of a bad smell, but to trust him and to focus on his promises. And as they do this, so they see resurrection and new life when that didn't seem possible. Grief, trust and focus all woven together in this story of death and new life that foreshadows Jesus' own crucifixion and resurrection, in which we see the deepest grief, find the truest trust, and which is the focus of all history. Before we get to that, though, we hear Luke's, from Luke's biography of Jesus about a conversation that Jesus had with his followers in the temple court. This, you see, is the temple that was rebuilt in Jerusalem when the exiles returned from Babylon. It is proof in stone that God did not disappoint, but answered that glimmer of hope in lamentations and brought the people home. To the disciples, it's not just a beautiful building, but a solid sign of God's faithfulness and redemption. It is one of the foundation stones of their faith. And Jesus takes it down. It's not going to last, he says. Not one stone will be left on another. That building that has been such an important part of the expression of your faith and worship, it's going. We've had a bit of a taste of that. But at least our building is still standing. Just imagine how you'd feel if I stood here one Sunday morning and announced that the time will come where there will be not one stone left on another of All Saints building. How would you feel? 
I'd expect you'd want some details. The disciples certainly did. They knew the kind of grief it would cause. Lamentations-style grief. But Jesus doesn't give them details. He calls them to trust him and the Father, to not be distracted by the false teaching, the conflict, the famine, the plague, the pestilence, but to continue to focus on the main thing, the coming of the kingdom of God. In all three of our readings, there is uncertainty. Uncertainty in the face of exile. Uncertainty in the face of sickness and death. Uncertainty in the face of the future. And in all this uncertainty, the themes of grief, trust and focus are woven together in a way which I see making hope possible. It's in this time of uncertainty, of change, of facing the whole long haul of COVID-19, it seems to me that it's important that we're honest and open about what we're grieving for and to bring that grief to God and to experience God grieving with us. When we have a lack of understanding and we are distressed, we're also invited to trust, to lean into the everlasting arms which will hold us. And finally, we are called to focus, not on the waves or the storm, but on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. I'm going to invite Richard and Lucy to come back to the dais. And we're going to take a moment just to continue to reflect and to pray. Holy Spirit, would you come? Holy Spirit, where, you're, where we're grieving, would you comfort us? Would you help us to express our anger and our lament? Where we have lost hope, would you teach us to trust? Where we're distracted, would you help us to focus on Jesus? Holy Spirit, come and minister to us now, we pray. to see me through sorrow to you you are my hiding place I run to you I need 
to see me through. So I'll run to you. You are my strength, O oh God. You will uphold me. You shield, oh God, you will protect me, you are my strength, oh God, you will uphold me, you are my shield. to see me through so And we continue in prayer uh, with intercessions that Carol has written for us and sent to me to share with you. The response is, Lord, in your mercy. And the response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, during your ministry on earth, you showed your power and care by healing people of all ages and stations of life from physical, mental and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness in how you have guided and equipped people in their jobs and have provided in the past. It can be scary and overwhelming not knowing how bills and obligations will be met or not to be able to provide for families. As people feel financial strain during the uncertainty, bring them comfort and peace reminding them that you are there for them. Provide for them in their times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who just protect their own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Jesus who wept with Mary and Martha. We pray for those who are grieving for the loss of loved ones now. We pray particularly for the families of David Treadwell and Joan Davies, whose funerals were this week. May they know your Holy Spirit's presence and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. And we join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It may be that there are things that have come up for you this morning that you'd uh, like further prayer for, someone to pray with you about. Um, If you're in the church building, uh, do just uh, grab me afterwards or send me a message in the week. If you're on the stream, if you'd like to put a comment on the comment stream or private message someone to pray with you, uh, that would be be great. I'm hoping, I'm sorry, I forgot to remind people, if you're on the comment stream and you'd like to put prayer requests on there, do. Do feel that you can still do that. Um, and uh, folk will pray with you as we continue the service. Um, We are actually coming towards the end. We got quite a few notices though this morning, so I hope you're sitting comfortably wherever you are. First thing I have to do is to publish some bands of marriage. Here we go. So I published the bands of marriage between Robert James Rees and Emmy Heather Corbett, both single and both of this parish with qualifying connections with St. Peter's Kund. And this is for the third time of asking. Anyone here knows any reason why Robert and Amy should not marry each other? You are to declare it. Shall we pray for them? Father God, we thank you for the gift of love and of marriage. And as Robert and Emmy finalize the preparations for their wedding in these strange times, would they know you very close to them, and may they have a long and faithful marriage in which they grow closer to each other and to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Excellent. So, we have got, it's the beginning of the new term, we have got things starting up again, which is, it's good. Um, We've got Alpha on Tuesday night, which is going to start off as a Zoom Alpha uh, online. Um, So there's still room to come along to that, still room to invite people to that. Uh, So if you'd like to come along or you want to put anybody who you think might like to come along in touch with me, please email me or direct message me um, and I'll send them the Zoom room details. That's half past seven on Thursday, on Tuesday evening. Uh, If you're not coming, please do be praying for us. Uh, for the guests and for all the technology, Uh, but that all works. (laughs) Seems to have done so far this morning, that's good. Okay, so that's on Tuesday, Um, and then next Saturday night, September the 12th, it would normally be Ignite, but it's not going to be Ignite this month. There's a new wine Shropshire evening. It starts a little bit later, eight o'clock. It's the same kind of thing, um, worship, and some input from the Bible, an opportunity to pray with and for each other. It's going to be on Zoom, um, and you need to register. So it's a little bit different to Ignite in that way. So if you'd like to come along uh, to New Wine Shropshire evening on next Saturday, you need to book your place. And um, those of you who are in church probably can't read what it says up there, can you? 
No, it is on the notice, or some of you can, some of you got very good eyes. Um, those of you on the stream will be able to read it. It's also on the notice sheet, uh, www.tinyurl.com slash newwineshropsh. Newwineshropsh. Um, so that would be really good. That's on Saturday. Um, on Sunday, we're going to try and do Explore physically, in person. Um, we're going to have it in the parish centre. It'll be a little bit different to normal. We'll have the tables out with the craft material on and families who come along will need to stay on the same table. So in their little bubbles. Um, and adults are going to have to wear face coverings. Um, and you will need to book a space. But with all that paraphernalia all the, out of the way, we do have the opportunity to meet for Explore next Sunday evening afternoon in the parish centre so families and youngsters can see each other and talk across the, the tables at least and do the craft together. We will also be streaming it, so you don't have to come, you still can watch it from home. Or oh, actually, I'm not sure we're doing that. Sorry, I'm just remembering the conversation we had at staff meeting. Kimberly's nodding at me, she thinks we're streaming it. Oh, she doesn't know. If we're not streaming it, we will be videoing it and making the video available on the Facebook page and YouTube afterwards. I'm not sure we've got the, the broadband connection down there isn't good enough. It's on a different one to church. Maybe all these technical details you discover. <laughs> so it's not good enough to stream from down there. So we'll be recording it and then uploading it for fit folk to do it afterwards if they'd like to. Um, but if you'd like to come along, email Caroline um, and book your table. That would be great. Um, and then we're still uh, thinking about Shift Church, which we're hoping to start at the beginning of October on Wednesday evenings. Um, if you'd like to be involved in that, uh, please do let me know. Um, if you're thinking, oh, well, there's probably loads of people sticking their hands up, so I don't need to. At the moment, I don't have enough people to run it. So at the moment, it's not happening. Um, so if you really want it to happen, don't sit back, because it's not going to. If you'd like it to happen, and you think it's important, you think this is something God's calling us to, please uh, get in touch with me uh, so we can, we can do that. If it's not, that's fine, actually. God's got something else for us. That's okay. But don't miss it, because you thought someone else was going to do it. Zoom rooms will be opening in a little while for those of you who are online and uh, would like to join in that. The details are coming up on the screen and will be in the stream, I am, comment stream, I imagine. Um, for those of you who are in the building, I'm afraid there isn't coffee, but if you'd like to congregate in the sunshine at a social distance and say hi to each other after the service, that would be fine. Um, or you could just go home really quickly and jump on Zoom and go to the Zoom coffee. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever you like, really. So... We're coming towards the end of our service. In a moment, we're going to have our final hymn. Um, it's been good to have you with us, those of you who are on the stream and those of you who are in the building. Um, if you've got feedback on how this has worked for you, please do, do let me know. Um, as far as I'm aware, all the text works. Um, but yeah, feedback to us, it is work in progress. We're a little bit making up as we go along. So the feedback helps us to shape it as we go forward. Can't always do everything people want. There are limitations, but do let us know. So, beyond all the technology and all the planning and everything, I was reflecting on the service this morning when I was quite anxious that it was all going to work. I was praying and it was just, actually, uh, none of that's important. What's important is us coming to Jesus. It's all this stuff, it can, it can help or it can get in the way. But actually, that's our focus. It's Jesus and his love for us and the amazing grace we find in God. So for our final hymn today, let's sing of God's amazing grace. was great.
God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, it's good to have you, those on your stream. We're going to end the stream now because you don't need to see me dismissing the folk in church pew by pew. If you, those in church could just wait a moment. Thank you. Okay.